I'm just wondering how far your conversation with uh, health officials of Cuba government, are you going to talk to them or you have already started talking to them and just well, how did uh, this conversation go? I'm just curious. Actually. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what we're trying, what we've done is we've contacted people in the Ministry of Health in Quebec, uh, and we have a meeting in uh, late November in Quebec City with some people in the Ministry where we're going to present our results and tell them why we think they should listen to us. Uh, bureaucracy in Canada, well, bureaucracy in Quebec is particularly uh, rampant, but unfortunately bureaucracy everywhere is rampant. Whether we'll have success or not, I don't know, but you know, the one thing that I do know that politicians love is to be able to tell the public that they actually save money, okay? Because everybody's always telling them how they're spending money and how they're never saving money. So what I'm hopeful is that maybe they'll actually listen, and maybe, you know, with some hard work on our, our, on our part, they'll actually maybe do something. Maybe I'm being stupidly naive, but I'm, a, I'm an optimistic guy, and uh, I reckon we've got as good a chance as anybody else. Nobody else seems to be trying to do anything to save the money. So, if we could save them some and uh, actually get get somewhere, I think it would be great. And it's not, you know, we don't have to do much. All we have to do is, that, you know, popula population of patients. And, you know, number one, figure out what the, what the lifetime of the neutrophils is. That's the simple test. That's the, the D2O2 drinking contest. And then for each patient, we know what we should do in terms of avoiding the resonant period. The resonant period is easy to figure out. It's like any engineering student can do it. You just do a, it's a, like an input-output curve. And it's two times the transit time. And then for each patient, we just say, okay, well, you're gonna have a chemotherapy regime that's uh, 17 days long, and you, Mrs. Y, you're gonna have one that's 24 days long, and you, Mr. Z, you're gonna have one that's 18 days long and see what the outcome is. And you measure every day or every three days how your data? You mean cell counts? Yeah. Well, ideally, we'd like to have it every day. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as we were talking earlier, you know, if you've got a patient, uh, you know, they're sick, mm -hmm. they're not too happy about going to the hospital, but one thing that's pretty exciting, I think, uh, my colleague David Dale in Seattle, uh, I've known David for uh, about 40 years, and we've worked together on and on. And so this has been a constant problem in his bedevilness, how to get good data. So he started a partnership with Philips Electronics five years ago. And Philips has developed this little doodad that you can take home with you. You stick your finger in a hole, and it's like one of those little trick things that you used to have when you were a kid. A needle comes out, bang, jabs you in the finger, draws a drop of blood, and it has a really crude microscope in it. But it's not crude, so crude, it can actually measure the number of neutrophils and the number of red cells and the number of platelets. So this is something that people can use at home. It automatically records the data, and if you plug it into the telephone line and dial a phone number, it will then send the data to the registry in Seattle, so they will know exactly what your white cell, red cell, and platelet count is, which means that if somebody's on chemotherapy, they don't have to go down to the University Hospital at the U of W, and sit around in some clinic with a bunch of other sick people waiting three hours to have blood drawn and then go home. They can stick their finger in the hole, get zapped, and then send the data off. And so what we're hoping is that we can actually use this for patients on chemotherapy to collect data maybe every day. It'd be wonderful. They're already using
focusing it on patients that have cyclical neutropenia because we're getting beautiful data now that we didn't have before, so we're getting daily counts. It's great. And this is exactly what we need. And so the idea is not only do we get the data, but we put it in the public uh, domain, so the data is available, the patient is anonymous, but the treatment that they're getting and when they're getting it is there along with the data that's collected. So this is, this is something that's really important because one of the worst things about trying to do modeling is the lack of data. And everybody who collects data guards it jealously. They don't want to share it because it took them a lot of time and trouble and effort and money and everything else. And so, but now, I think, it, I think here, I think the NIH has actually made it mandatory that if you collect data with public money, you have to make it publicly available. And, uh, good. And the CIHR in Canada has done the same thing, but I don't think they put the same teeth into it as the United States has done. Any other question? Look at this. Thank the speaker one more time. Dr. Mitch will give us his second talk from 2.30 in Royal Hall, 2.11. So if you're interested, please come.